it creates this little ball that says record. That little ball is like, that's been around since the 70s. Um, anyway, um, so, so this is just a vibrating motor. It came from an old neck massager. Um, but you can also make this out of dual shocks. If you have an old PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2 controller or an old Xbox controller, you can pop it open. And uh, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see this little motor with a half a circle of metal. That's how they do the vibration. Yeah, that's how they do the vibration. That's this, what happens. When yeah, so it goes around and around. So what happens is this thing goes around and it moves back and forth. So the vibration just occurs when this thing spins around. It's just an off. It's just an off-weighted motor. And uh, so we're talking about. So you can make one of these. It's really simple. You just get one of these and you t attach the wires to a nine-volt battery, and uh, off you go. So we're studying waves. And uh, this is a wave. This is called a standing wave. It's called a standing wave because the energy is basically going from the vibrating motor up to my thumb, back down again, and up and back, and up and back. And there are parts to this wave. Um, this part down here that doesn't look like it's moving much, and this part up here that doesn't look like it's moving much. Um, does anyone know what those parts of the wave are called? The crest. The Nope. The what are the ends of a wave called? Oh, um, it starts with an N. It was in your crosswalk. Nodes. 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 nodes, yeah. So these are nodes. And uh, I like to think of nodes as an area of no energy. Okay. So that's a node, and that down there is a node. And in the middle of the node is an area of maximum amplitude. And what are those maximum amplitude points called? Antinodes, right? So this is a standing wave with two nodes and one anti-node. Now I'm going to take the same thing, the same deal, and I'm going to try to double the wave energy here, or double the wavelength, sorry. Um, let's see how good I am. That's about double, there we go. Now, um, now we have the same um, wave energy, but it's stretched over a longer distance. So how many nodes do you see? Four, three. three. Four. Oh, none. One, four. two, Three. Oh, and three. how many antinodes do you see? Two. 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 One, two. Okay. Um, so there you go. And if, it, if I was really tall, I might be able to pull off uh, a triple here. Let's see if. Let's go, Shaq. I believe. I'm sure. I like Icy Hawk. I'm sure. All right. There we go. Gold bond. So, so yeah. <laughs> one there. Is it gold bond now? I don't there we go. Know. So uh, now, uh, okay. do you need something for your drying pack? Please? There we go. So, <laughs> antinode, antinode, antinode. So now we got three antinodes and one, two, four. three, four. Yeah, four nodes. Yeah. And Eli asked a really interesting question. He said, "What would you? What would happen if you swung it like a pendulum?" In that voice, <laughs> just like that. Um, well, something really interesting happens if you swing it like a pendulum. Uh, that's not that. It's not the that freaking out. Like, let, me get, let me get it back to uh, maybe if I did it one, one wave. There we are. Um, something interesting happens if you swing this. The wave basically cancels out at the higher points because the tension of the wave is different, and it turns out that the tension of a wave has a lot to do with how fast the wave energy will move through a string. Tension in the string will have a lot to do with how uh, well or how fast the wave energy will move through the string. And you're going to investigate that in a lab. You have these really cool little devices that stretch a rope and then they connect to the wall and they bounce up and down and create standing waves. So you're going to create standing waves in lab. Now this is a singing rod. Yes? What was the like, stuff you're putting in your fingers to? Bow rosin. Bow rosin. Bow rosin. Um, so like, um, but it's been crushed, so it's easier to get on your fingers. Um, so this is a singing rod, and it's uh, 60 centimeters long. So I put it up against my measuring device, and I grab it at the 30 centimeter mark. Flip it around. I think I was. I think I bowed it up on the other side there. I can't believe you did that. So. I got bow rosin on my hands, and my, the bow rosin is doing the same thing to my fingers that it does to a bow on a violin string. If you were to take a slow-mo, anyone play violin in here? Or any string in an instrument where you were? Okay, okay. If you were to take a slow-mo of the bow, let's say this is the string, and this is the bow, what you'd see is the bow does not go slide, it actually goes skip, 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 skip. It's called slip stick resonance. 
And what it's doing is it's hitting the string several times. It's going skip, 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 skip. And that's imparting energy to the string, causing it to vibrate. My fingers are doing the same thing. So I hold this rock up here, and then rock up there. Yeah, the bow rosin causes my uh, my fingers to kind of touch, 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 and that's imparting bits of energy, like if I was hitting out a bunch. So you can do the same thing by hitting out a bunch. You can make it ring. Well, that's what my fingers are doing. Like, ta -ta 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 -ta, and it's causing it to ring. And just because I like to do it loud, here we go. Now you can do this. Um, realize yeah. bow rosin's a little sticky, so realize you're going to get sticky gunk on your fingers. Oh my gosh. That's a lot. Now you might notice, where am I holding this? Where am I being very careful to hold this? Oh, middle. Right. Yeah. right in the middle. Oh. If I hold it at like uh, somewhere not the middle, I hear it a little bit. <laughs> if I hold it at one quarter, then you get uh, then you get resonance again. So oh, one quarter so like is nice. 15. If I hold it at 15, then I do get resonance and a much higher pitch. So what I'm doing is I'm causing this to vibrate. I'm causing it to vibrate at its natural frequency. So singing rods, you can play with them. They're right up here. Um, here's here's another. Here's another shock. This is actually the first one I made years ago when I broke a dual shock controller in half. Um, they do the same thing. Again, you can make one at home if you do don't you get the string tangled up before you drop it. Uh, and Rearranging at Call of Duty. Yeah, they uh, No. AC-130 above. So, there you go. Yay! Node, 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 and node, and node. So you can make one of these at home, impress your friends, and, and intimidate your, your enemies. So. And this is a Rubens tube, which I will show you tomorrow. A what? Oh. Aww. It makes the flames, and the flames go everywhere. Dude, five times. Well, that is. All right, is this where you play music into it, and then the flames will go at different? Yes. Dude. Chase Hamill told me about this. Yes. About a month ago. I'm going to beat him is, up. He goes, that was probably the coolest thing we ever did in that class. Yeah. All right, well now we gotta do it. Thanks, Chase. Can we play Mo Bongo with it? Um, I don't know. That or Sicko Mo, your, your pick. Well, here's the crazy thing. The first time I did this, first time I let somebody play music through it, and it went bop, 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 um, Google nixed the video. Because it had copyrighted video, copyrighted music in it. And the robots detected it. So, uh, a little dicey. Damn so, robots. Damn robots. Yeah. Here it is. Anyway. You could just right. make audio over it with you Rain just singing the song. <laughs> oh, how, how do you put beatbox? We'll do a Minecraft parody. <laughs> okay, so uh, sound and light are waves. What are waves? Waves are vibrating things. Now with a sound wave, it's vibrating matter. It could be vibrating air. The reason you're able to hear me talk <coughs> is my face, my entire skull, is basically a resonance chamber, just like when you blow into the end of a flute, the entire flute vibrates, the air inside the flute vibrates, and um, if you take a guitar string and you go bing, it doesn't really make much noise, but you attach that guitar string to a big wooden bell, a big wooden tank, then that tank vibrates and, uh, and you get some noise. Same kind of thing, um, my face wouldn't make nearly as much noise if my face wasn't there. So my face is vibrating, causing the air to vibrate, and you're hearing those vibrations, and they're cruising out towards you, and then they're getting channeled into the ear canal. That's why you have these little, these little ear channeling devices, or uh, sound channeling devices. They're channeling that sound into your ear canal, and then your eardrum is vibrating sympathetically with the waves in the air. Basically, sympathetically means about the same frequency. So I go, blah, and the ear comes, and your ear hits your eardrum, and it goes, blah. And then a bunch of other stuff happens that we'll talk later on in the unit. So those are waves. Two types of waves. Uh, two types of waves we're going to talk about transverse waves and longitudinal waves. From your, uh, your pre-unit notes, what kind of wave is this? Transverse, right. A transverse wave moves the medium, if there is one, perpendicular to the path of the wave travel. It doesn't need a medium, but if there is one, it's going to move perpendicular to the path of wave travel. 
Light waves are transverse waves. But light waves don't need a medium. Light waves are the vibrations of electrons that send out electromagnetic waves. Photons. They send out photons. Photons? Photons. photons. Right, photons. Photons. Same, same thing. Yeah. Photons. So they send out photons. And uh, so the vibration in atoms causes the electron, or the energetic, energizing atoms causes electrons to go boop, boop, and that sends out a photon. That's a transverse wave. The wave is moving perpendicular to the wave travel. Okay. Longitudinal waves are uh, far more, uh, a little more difficult to imagine, but in, trans in longitudinal waves, waves move at the same direction, they move parallel to the wave path. So the longitudinal waves, particles move in the same direction or parallel to the wave path, back and forth. Yeah, this makes some longitudinal waves. So shock waves are longitudinal waves. Sound waves are longitudinal waves. Longitudinal waves require a medium. By no sound in space. Sorry, Star Wars and video games. No sound in space. Because there's not a lot of particles in space. There's not enough particles to bounce into each other. Come on, those explosions are definitely real. They're really real. Extra real? Wait, Super wait, duper but what? CGI real. Is it, would lasers work though? Lasers would work great. There'd be nothing to. There'd be nothing to get in the way. Down here, uh, air gets in the way of lasers and particulates and pollution, but uh, not in space. Lasers work great. So, so transverse wave, me, it doesn't need a medium. It can have a medium, but it doesn't need a medium. Longitudinal waves need a medium. You can't have a shock wave without something to move it through. Okay. Now in this unit, we're going to spend most of our, actually pretty much all of our time, talking about longitudinal waves, talking about shock waves. Specifically, sound waves. Uh, and uh, then next unit we'll talk about optics and light and, and color, and we'll talk about transverse waves. Now understand, when we draw waves, just because it's easier to see the wave, we will usually draw the wave like this. You've seen these guys sine waves before? Okay. So we're usually going to draw the wave like that. And when we think about waves, we usually think about wave like that. Understand that the only, that this looks like a transverse wave, but we can write a longitudinal wave the same way. So in a longitudinal wave, we have matter that's close together and matter that's really far apart. So this is matter that's close together. This is the top of a transverse wave. This is matter far apart. So this is matter far apart, this is the bottom of a transverse wave, and these have special names. This is called a crest. This is called a trough. This is called a compression. And this is called an anti-compression. Rarefaction. Called a rarefaction. So what's happening in a compression? The particles are close together. What's happening in rarefaction? The particles are spread apart. Kind of like when a wave goes out, it builds up wave, wave material and then it comes back. When the material in a shock wave, that compression goes, then it leaves behind a rarefaction. All right. I've got All right, sound waves. Ooh, hold on, back away. So sound waves are longitudinal, they need a medium. And in case you're wondering, the speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second, which is not really all that fast, relatively speaking. Okay. 340 meters per second is not exceptionally fast. We break it all the time. We go faster than that all the time. You can go faster than that. You can make something go faster than the speed of sound. How you where you are with the, how fast the Earth is traveling mm -hmm. through space. So what's the difference between that and the speed of sound? Uh, uh, the sound, 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 sound barrier. When you break the sound barrier, you cause something to travel faster than the speed of sound. A little 
thumper is missing, so I'll just do this. Forward. I find something else to whack it with. Oh, I can't. You should never hit a tuning fork with something metal. Thank you for mentioning that. You yeah. should never hit a tuning fork with something metal. Why? Never, ever, ever. Why is that? Because um, you can cause the tuning fork to chip. Oh. I'm looking for something that has like a rubber end. I used to have a mallet, but I gave all my tuning forks um, to Miss Pollen. Uh, so she could have a set of nice tuning forks. Oh well. I can try this. Ooh, I got it! Big brain. is usually how we use the tuning forks. So a tuning fork makes sound by vibrating back and forth. Brand new tuning forks. That's a lot of tuning forks. Yes, they are. We've had kind of a lousy set for the last, well, since the school's been here. And uh, I was like, you know what? We're upgrading our tuning forks because my physics students deserve the very best. Thank, so, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So you get a tuning fork on the back of your shoe and it vibrates back and forth, sending out sound waves. So, this is just a large tuning fork that's going to do a box. I thought like you could put those two together and did something special. Wait, what was that? You know that? Yeah, well, wait, the board was vibrating, right? Mm -hmm. And the board acts as a medium. The board, yeah, the board basically uh, causes the waves to build up and makes more sound. So, uh, light waves, just to stow this away for the next unit. Uh, light waves are transverse waves, they don't need a medium, and they travel at 300 million meters per second. Three times 10 to the eighth meters, one third, or 0 0.3 so billion. Slow. Yeah, three times 10 to the eighth. That's 300 million meters per second. That's pretty fast. That's, ex ex that's really fast. Really, really fast. That's the speed of light. That is the speed of light, yes. So light waves move at the speed of light in a vacuum. Um, or in air, they're pretty close in air. Okay, question so far? Um, yes. It's kind of like a dumb question, but like, so that fast, there's really no possible way to break the speed of the yeah. light, right? Correct. No possible way to break the speed of light. And uh, when you get within about a tenth of the speed of light, when you get to about three times 10 to the seventh meters per second, all sorts of wonky stuff happens to particles. They, they encounter what's called quantum effects, which we will talk about at the end of the year if we get to quantum. So yeah, when you get to about a tenth of the speed of sound, or speed of light, then goofy stuff happens. One tenth of the speed of light. About one tenth of the speed of light. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, halfway there. All right. There's a third type of wave which you should mention, and that is a combination of uh, transverse and longitudinal, and it's called a surface wave. So a surface wave is like an ocean wave or an earthquake wave. So a surface wave is a mixing of longitudinal and transverse waves. Do earthquakes count as those? Yes. Earthquakes and surface waves. That's cool. So they both carry energy. Uh, so hybrid wave, adding surface wave, or adding transverse and longitudinal to get a surface wave. Okay, so to make waves, let's make some waves. Uh, if you hit something once, it's called a pulse. Basically, sending a wave pulse, like a clap, is a wave pulse. You squish the air out of your hands, squish, and it spits out as fast. Yeah. And the air spits out between your hands really fast. That's a wave pulse. If you want to put this on Google Classroom, I can too. Just let me know. If, it's, if there is a desire, I can just dump this on Google Classroom for you. So wave pulse, boom, wave spits out of your hands. Zoom, off it goes. Uh, usually longitudinal. Or you can create resonance, vibration, and simple harmonic motion. And that's what's going on with the singing rod. That's what's going on with the, the dual shock. That's what's going on with the tuning forks, is the vibrations going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. 
creating resonance and simple harmonic motion. It's kind of fun if uh, if you take basically if you take a, a bouncing spring and you move it horizontally, it's going to map out a sine wave. If you take a swinging pendulum and move it tangentially or this way, <laughs> it'll also make a, a, a sine wave. I take a swinging pendulum and move it this way. It'll make a pen, it'll make a sine wave on the floor. So this is what you get when you continually reinforce the wave, Chris. So you place on the other side, so you can't really create a, 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 like some light through a pulse, or anything, right? Not really. Because no. it has to have a medium. Correct. And even if you did have a pulse of light, it would be exceptionally difficult to detect a single single electronic transition. So electrons, they, they, they're in low shells, remember from chemistry, electrons are in shells and they jump up a shell and they come back down and they give off a photon. So remember that from yeah. chemistry? Like September of chemistry? That's so electrons are in the bottom shell and they jump up, then they jump back down and they give off a photon of light. So it'd be very hard to detect a single photon of light. It'd be much easier when there's a whole bunch of photons of light. All right, questions? Okay, waiting a second. Okay. <clears throat> I get to wave parts. Parts of wave. All right, here we go. Parts of waves. If my oh, that was anticlimactic. Come on, button. There we go. Parts of waves. Okay, so the wavelength is given the Greek letter lambda, little l lambda. And the wavelength is the distance from a crest to a crest or a trough to a trough or until the wave repeats itself. Its unit is in meters. Wavelength unit is in meters. So uh, if you were to measure the wavelength of this wave, it would be from this point to this point. Or if the wave kept going, if it kept going up, then it would be from this point to this point. Lambda. How do you pronounce that symbol? Lambda. Lambda. Okay. Sheep says, what am I? You're right. You're a lambda. 